All right, so case study number four. I'm gonna do away with the obnoxious Kool-Aid slash Slim Jim Man, oh yeah thing. And let's just talk about family portraits. When it comes to shots like this, while it looks very simple and it looks very natural and candid and so forth, there are a lot of things going through my mind, particularly because we are dealing with family portraits and we're dealing with children. Anytime we're dealing with children, there's a lot of additional things that I'm thinking about because you don't necessarily know how much time you have when you're shooting kids. If you've done a lot of family portraits, you know that whenever kids are involved, you're essentially on what I refer to as borrowed time. You're on their time. And when they decide they've had enough, they've had enough. That means that we need to move quick. We need to do things that are very fast, very efficient, and we need to keep them involved and engaged at the shoot. Otherwise, when they decide they've had enough, it's over. And that was exactly the case in this shoot because about 30 minutes into the shoot, she did something, I think she tripped or something, and she kind of hit her wrist when mom and dad were holding her hand, and she got upset. And when Caitlin got upset, she just wanted to basically stop shooting, and we couldn't get her back into the shooting state. And I thought, you know, it's really good that we moved so quickly and got so many shots at the beginning of the shoot because we actually have a lot of fantastic images for them, and it was only like, we only got like 20 minutes of actual photos out of them. So here are some of the tips that I have for y'all. When we're doing these kind of shots, we need to move quickly. And one of the things that I love doing is this whole reflector bounce technique is one of my favorite techniques when shooting images like this because it is so fast and it gives you great results and it's so easy to set up. And when you're in the right type of lighting situation, you can then get a good recycle time as well if you keep your flash power down just a bit. So how do we approach this scene? Well, when we got here, I saw this beautiful backlit area, I saw the grass. So, and this is the funny thing, if you're looking at, at an area of nature, if you're looking at it head on with the light coming from behind you, right? So the light from the sun is directly lighting that area. It's gonna look like bunk. It's gonna look really, really crappy and really bad and it doesn't look good. And I always tell my clients, oh, don't worry, you need to walk to the other side and look back towards where the sun is. And as soon as we do that, like every single time, you walk to the other side, turn around, and you're like, oh my gosh, this is like a scene from a movie or something. Everything's backlit and it looks so beautiful. And, and your clients will think, this guy's crazy awesome. He knows exactly what he's talking about. This area looked like junk. I would have never shot here, but as soon as he walked to that other side, it looked like magic. These are wonderful little tricks that make you look like a magician. I love looking like a magician. Magician pie. Okay, so once I get into that scene, we sit him down, and again, I look at my light. I take my test shot, right? In this test shot, I have this beautiful background, and what am I thinking in my mind as far as dramatic versus natural? I'm shooting family. I'm shooting candids. I want natural. What does that mean the background needs to be? The background needs to be a little bit brighter. I'm not going to try and underexpose and pull everything down and make it super dramatic because it's not going to fit the mood of our shot. Now, depending on how dramatic you want it, or I'm sorry, depending on how natural, how bright you want the background, that's really a stylistic decision that's up to you. For me, I wanted a little bit of richness in it. I wanted some of the highlights to be blown, but I also wanted to see some of the color in there. So this is the exposure that I went with for my base shot. What is that exposure? I'm on the Sigma 50 millimeter 1.4 Art. This is the Canon 50 mil. And then I have uh, the, cam uh, the camera set to 1 200 of a second at F2 and ISO 50. Inside of the shaded area with where the sun is, we don't need a neutral density filter. Dropping to ISO 50 was enough. Again, I'm not concerned about the little loss in dynamic range because I'm letting things blow out anyway. I'm not trying to capture all the detail and go for a super dramatic shot. I want it to be a little bit more natural, a little bit brighter. So this is the exposure that we land at. At F2, I can still get them very sharp and create beautiful separation between the background, but I do remind them. I remind mom and I remind dad, just keep your faces kind of close and not in front or behind of each other or in front of uh, your daughter. Okay, from there, all I do is I have my reflector. A Westcott 5-in-1, uh, I have a white over a silver in this shot. My assistant's holding it off to the right side. I've decided that I like the way that this looks. And notice, as far as lights go, let's count how many different lights we have set up here. We have the sun, which is coming in as a backlight on the entire scene, right? I've placed them naturally over the highlights in the scene. Do you guys notice that? So the highlight areas, you're kind of drawn right into this area of the image. There's a little bit more highlight on this side, but that's okay, we're still good. The trees on this side aren't as good, which is why I'm kind of focusing them over here. We have, so we have our background light, we have our kind of our uh, 
just a little rim light that's coming in on the right side of her body right there. And we have a kicker coming in on the left side of his face right here. We have a soft fill naturally coming in from the right front of their faces. You can see it right here wrapping over each of them. The only problem is that fill is not enough to be a main light, right? But it still has, there's still a light direction present with the natural light in that shot. So rather than kind of override that, rather than just kind of ignore it, I'm only there to kind of boost and refine that. So I place my white over silver with my assistant just off to the right side of me, and we're bouncing in the same direction as where that natural light is coming from. So we're following the direction of existing light so we can keep the shadows, and we can keep the kicker and the rim and the hair lights and everything else the exact same way in this final shot. We end up with this beautiful shot. I'm shooting tons of different images in this scene, getting different reactions from Caitlin and from mom and from dad, and we're getting amazing looking images. I have them stand up. We get shots with her holding mom and dad's hand, and it's fantastic. We got a beautiful scene. Right after that, Caitlin sprains her wrist while mom and dad are holding her hand, and she's basically done with the shot. But we've got 20, 30 great shots. And this technique of bouncing, we're bouncing at roughly one quarter to one eighth power. I can fire quickly every single time, get all the different reactions, get all the different shots and not have to worry about my camera recycling. Now, because I am bouncing so close to where the camera body is, my, my reflector is literally just right to the right side of me. I don't need to worry about my grid, okay? I can take the grid off and I can leave it off for the shot because it's not gonna spill forward, it's just gonna go right to the right side. I'm not trying to angle it and get any kind of super dramatic lighting, I just want a basic loop light and that's what I have here. Okay, again, the light's coming top down. You can see as the shadow's kind of extending down on each side so that we have a natural look to the shot. So you can approach this scene a whole number of ways. We can change the way that our background looks. You want it to be brighter? Great, brighten it up. Slow the shutter speed down or increase the ISO and lower the flash power. That mixture between, well, whatever you want the background to be, the brightness of the background versus the brightness of the flash is gonna yield the type of natural, more natural, or going the other way, going dramatic, more dramatic type image. For this shot, natural or more natural, or even more natural is what's gonna look best. And because we're shooting candid, then we're shooting family. So hopefully that makes sense in all the kind of considerations that go into these types of shots and these types of scenes to make sure that we use all of the lights present. We only added one additional light in the scene, yet it looks like we have a three or four light setup with everything that's going on here. And all we've really done is just thought about the light position, worked with the subject placement, and then add our own light on top of that. That's it for this video. Let's head on to the next one now.